gives me great pleasure to welcome you this year. The theme is to listen to the master's call. This message is to one of all. You can say back or laugh or share. I hope you enjoy everything you hear. Welcome Joshua and I'll be here from the Faith Arabian Choir with Platform Harvest Song.
20 and counting. This, the master is calling. The master is calling. The master is calling. He is calling today. Listen, my friends, to what he has to say. I am here knocking at the door of your heart. Please open it. Don't send the heart. The master is calling. He is calling today. Listen, my friends, to what he has to say. Too many of you are straying from my path to one which will bring you disaster and wrath. The master is calling. He is calling today. Listen, my friends, to what he has to say. Your great passion for material possession is only temporal. Seek me who offers you life eternal. The master is calling. He is calling today. Listen, my friends, to what he has to say. Follow their graciousness and peace. Let all acts of violence and cruelty cease. The master is calling. He is calling today. Listen, my friends, to what he has to say. Away from my my sins are ready. Working time is here. Be persistent and stay. The master is calling. He is calling today. Listen, my friends, to what he has to say. My love for you has been proven and is true. This call is for each one of you. Thank you. The harvest truly is plenteous, and so the master is calling for laborers in his vineyard for those who will serve him. Therefore, Brother Bernard comes to tell us that God shows. God shows to me. When I have to be certain to me, my God shows me to be certain to me. On him still small voice say to me, for he promised to be with me to the end. My God, I can bring any matters to you, for you will direct me to do what I must do. Master, help me to be willing to accept your call and to be one of your faithful disciples as a God. In your holy scriptures, you ask us to make disciples of God, for the whole world should listen and obey your call. There are many wonders and signs of the time, which are relevant to all of us. Amen.
Shining light, shining, shining, also bright. Please listen to my little prayer, which I say when the day is clear. Thank you, Lord, for our day, but we have so much to say. Jonah, the prophet, was sent by God on a mission, but he disobeyed God's great commission. To the people of Nineveh, he was sent, but the Tarshish, Jonah, disobediently went. A little while after Jonah, rain he arrived, the ship began to make a nose dive. As the waves lashed and the sea roared, the crew decided to throw their bears overboard. Fear and despair gripped the captain and the crew. The scarcely knew what to do. They called on their foreign gods while Jonah slept. Jonah not knowing how worried they felt. The shipmaster came down to him. Tell me if you have created this sin. Call on your God to save us all. Please do it. Bless you all. Jonah now admitted his mistake. They did for the crewmen's sake. The throw to an overboard was their wish. He was instantly swallowed up by a great fish. Jonah prayed to the Lord for the gut of the fish. He wanted the Lord to upset his wish. The fish vomited out on the land. That was the forgiven God's command. Jonah now was given a second chance. He preached to the people of Nineveh as if in a trance. The people listened to the call and repented. God accepted their praise as they relented. Friends, it is important to listen to the Master's call. Listen and obey His commands, 
verse 24. Examine the account of Jonah's faith, for he had made a terrible Good afternoon, Gladys. How are you? I haven't seen you in months. What has become of you? Hey, Mavis. Well, you know how the COVID keep me off the road, but I hear, girl. How about you? I'm fine. Little eggs and things, but I'm happy. Good to see you, girl. But wait, Mavis. Where is it that you offer this place Saturday afternoon? <coughs> I know you. And Saturday is your top there. So what do you sacrifice that for? If I know you well, the only thing that will keep you get in the way of your Saturday shopping is a church service. But you don't look dressed for church. So where is you up to now? Well, it's not a church program today, but we are preparing for our Harvest Festival tomorrow. So I'm going by the church here to decorate and help the children practice for the program. They have their recitation to say, and their songs to sing, and so on. You said harvest, right? That's when you take fruits and vegetables to church, isn't it? Yes. We give back to God some of what we have blessed us with, so as to show our appreciation. But that sounds ludicrous to me. Why would you give back if he has given it to you? That's like saying, I don't want this, you can have it back. No, not at all. It's like when you give your neighbor a pumpkin from your garden, and two weeks later she calls you and tells you to pass cross for a few coffee. Please. You know how hard things do. My pumpkin wife is very well to the wrong this time of the year, and I just give she some. And every year she just gives me some pumpkins just before Independence Day. Last year she called me two days before and said, Gladys, you home? I said to my grandson around there with a couple of pumpkins for you. He coming right now. They just come out the pot. Girl, I just be so happy. It is my mother who used to make coffee. I don't know a thing about making coffee. I don't know how they eat them. <laughs> that is exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know your friend Hortense, but because she appreciates the pumpkin, she gets back some of it in coffee. I see what you mean. Yes. God made the crop grow so you can say thanks to him by giving back some of it to him. So, Mavis, you talk about decorating the church and having a program for the children. Why you do all these things? I understand about the fruit and vegetables now, but I don't get dressed. Well, you see, Gladys, by their songs and recitation, the children are telling the story of God's goodness and giving thanks to Him. They sing praises to Him because He's so wonderful in giving us all that we need. It's an expression of their love and gratitude. Have you ever had someone give you something that you treasure? You know how thankful you are for that gift. Even Jesus, when he had healed the ten lepers, asked why only one came back to say thanks. Where were the other nine? Yes, I know how gratitude feels. Remember when I lost my first last year and that lovely young man found it and returned it to me? He saved me from having to get new ID cards and bank cards and everything. I was so grateful that I gave him 200 bills right there on the spot. Exactly what 
I was talking about. And you know, we use our talents to worship Him. We sing, we dance, we play the instrument. Whatever skills we have, we use it for God because we know He's the one who has blessed us with those skills. Okay. I guess we don't just develop those skills on our own. I know I can't carry the tune. As for dancing, I have two left feet. So any dance I do would be a pure disaster. So I guess those are special blessings from God. But maybe it's, there is still something I don't understand. Up to last week, I heard a preacher on the radio talking about giving money to God because it is God's money. After I worked so hard for so many long hours under all kinds of great circumstances, how could my paycheck be God's money? I earned it by my sweat sweat of my brow. How could God have claim on it? Well, let me ask you a question. Who gave you the strength and stamina to work the long hours of work? Who blessed you with the skills to execute your job? Who provided the means of transportation for you to go to get to work? And who kept you healthy most of the time so that you could maintain your job? Wow. I thought you said you had a question for me. That was a whole more full for our quick question. None of which I ever considered before, but I guess you would tell me that the answer is God. You got that right. God gave you the ability and put everything in place for you to earn an income. So who enables you to earn a living? God, of course. He has given us all things. All the resources are His. The silver and the gold and the cattle on a thousand hills. What we supposedly earn or have is just his, entrusted to our care. That's why the hymn says, We give thee by that, we give thee by thy own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O oh Lord, from thee. May we thy long Jesus, as stewards truly receive. And glad he has you blessed us to see our first good gift. Wow, another mouthful. But I think I understand. You are saying that it is really God, but he lends it to us. I couldn't have put it better. Yes, Granny. That is exactly what I'm saying. So now I know that I have much to give God thanks for. Food, shelter, clothing, family and friends. The sun, even as hot as it is nowadays, and in rain, even as inconvenient as it can be sometimes, my health and my strength, even my job, and his money that I earn. Very good, Gladys. Even his money he lends you. God gives you everything. All right, maybe. I can see you another time, girl. But tell me something. I've got a pumpkin to give you. I can get a couple of pumpkins. No, I don't make pumpkins, but you can get half a dozen pumpkin fritters. Oh, I like them too. And that would give me one more thing to be thankful for. <laughs> I can bring you pumpkin Monday, because I know you're going to church tomorrow. Enjoy your harvest. Why don't you come to the harvest with me? I guess I could do that, because I ain't have no place to, to go tomorrow. Good, see you tomorrow then. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Sister Dennis and Sister Joanne, or should I say Davis and Dennis, for reminding us of how good God is in providing for us all that we need. And so now we respond by giving back to him a portion of that with which he has blessed us. As the hymn writer says, all who gifts surround us are sent from heaven above. So thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. We will proceed with him 627 let us with a glass of mind praise the Lord for his time, for his mercies endure ever faithful 
We pray that we will continue here at faith as a family, even though we may come from different homes, so that as a family we'll work together, look out for each other, we'll also seek the best for each other. And at this harvest time, we not only bring up our produce, we bring up our lives and we bring up our monies so that it can all be used to your honor and glory. Let us not worry about the little aches and pains. These two will pass. But even though, Lord, we consider it serious, you have a handle of everything and on everything and on all of us. So take control of our lives, take control of our thoughts, our minds, our aims, our ambitions, as we move forward, we move with you and for you. Let us work together for your honor and glory. Bless what we have given and what is yet to be given. And let your name be glorified in every single thing that we do. In your name we ask that these words be in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 jealousy, violence, and crime. Fill your minds with love and light. Jesus will assist you in doing the right. Love and light go hand in hand, ingredients needed for the minds of man. Violence and crime seem to be overtaking the nations, spoiling a great percentage of God's creation. Mankind seems to prefer hate rather than love and light, thus creating quite an unpleasant sight. God is not pleased as you should know. He alone knows when he will show. Today, you are called to listen to him, the one who will set you free from sin. Amen. So he has no place among us. We have uh, one and all the harvest 
of salt has rather weight, otherwise we're time to our organics. What's on another half? He will do a monologue which he has himself prepared. The harvest of salt. The harvest of souls. On a great day like this, I would take occasion to be bold. I'm going to say a little something about the harvest of souls. The simplest of plans, so deep, so profound, showing the love of a great God, where salvation above. Behold the first fruits, the first stage of his grace. Where you and I are called now to accept the place, preparing for a kingdom that shall destroy the peace and usher in world, a world full of God's knowledge and peace. Then begins the next stage, our God is so bold, for only Christ can usher in this harvest of souls. One thousand years of reaping and conquering the masses, salvation for all is available, regardless of social class. Peace in the world will say the vanish. God can then work to the souls that are punished. But what will happen to those billions who live and die without even knowing the price to be paid? Take a challenge and dig into the holy book. Don't be afraid to have a brilliant look. Brilliant, brilliant. Many believe their hope is lost that their lives were faced that they had their chances, and that they cut off from God's grace. But take a closer look at one such passage in Ezekiel 37. The promise of hope may be given the promise of heaven. But God, as his people of old, he promises to bring them hope. In the past, we see the working of God a people who are dead without hope in this world. Yet, read the book. He gave them hope. And he says they deserve their salvation for later. You and I now are working toward that hope. Where we see another time, believe it or not, that God will reach and save those who believe, who we believe were not eligible for salvation. Like Jonah, some were angry that salvation is offered. But God said to him, Should I not save those who don't know the left hand and the right? Let us look forward to the harvest of souls for whatever time God chooses. That is the time he goes. Whether now, or when Christ comes, or perhaps another time, as is written, believe it or not, we have a Part the play so that it will be well given. Prepare yourselves for the harvest of souls because God is in the business of saving souls. Have a happy time. Yes, there is another harvest for which we need to prepare. Men. Jesus walked down the Galilean shore. He was in search of disciples and more. He saw two fishermen mending their nets. They had not completed their preparation as yet. Jesus looked at Peter and Andrew in a friendly way. He told them their occupation would change. The same day, if they were ready to follow his instructions, Peter and Andrew followed up 
knowing Jesus' intention. Peter and Andrew were now called to higher heights, where they will show others what was right. Little did they know that there were now disciples of Jesus who came to earth to save all of us. As they moved along the Sea of Galilee, they encountered two more fishermen, sons of Zebedee. <coughs> James and John were also men in the net. They too were not ready to leave as men. They heard the call of the Messiah to follow him, for he was sent to free them from sin. They obediently left everything behind, for they had a great change of mind. They will no longer be dependent on the sea as life does. They will now be following the master to the neighborhood. All of the disciples were not men of the sea. Others had various occupations in the sea. But one great thing each had in common. Each was willing to adhere to Jesus' son. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Thank you.
for his program, giving God thanks for all of his goodness. I therefore, on your behalf, to say thanks to all those who participated in making the harvest a success that it has been thus far. Please say a special word of thanks to our children who took the time out to learn the recitations and only come and recite for us. So to all of our children and their parents who have assisted them in getting ready a big party thank you. as well as the adults who did their twins and our scientists who would have led us in an understanding of God giving us everything. Special word of thanks to our choir who did a beautiful job for us today, leading us in the music area of our harvest. Let's put our hands together for the work. And the choir director, Mr. Wally. We look forward to hearing more things from the choir in the future and in our this of future. To all of you who have brought your gifts for Harvest today, thank you for your contribution. And uh, those who have worked hard in doing the preparations yesterday, decorating, preparing the produce and other gifts that have come, please say thanks for the contribution that you have made. To you who are here to participate in this harvest program, we say thanks for being a part of it all. It is important that we do understand what harvest is all about. I know, particularly as Caribbean people, but I think worldwide, one of the earliest things we learn, well, two very early things we learn. What are those two things? What are those two things? We tell the children the magic word. What's the first magic word? Please. And then the second magic word is thank you. So we learn that from the time we are being high or even less. Because it is important as we receive one to ask politely and so we go to God in prayers and then to remember to say thank you. The thing is that so often as human beings, I guess we get busy, we get caught up in all sorts of things, and first, we only remember God when we want something. When there is something that is too difficult for us, otherwise we feel we can manage on our own. But then we, we remember God at some point in time. And all too often, when we think of prayer, we think of asking. And our prayers tend to be, give me, give me, give me. And then we go away from there and we forget that God has given And we take it for granted. You heard mention of Jesus with the lepers, ten lepers, came looking for help. And he helped them, he sent them off to go and show themselves to the priest because that is what would be created to make them, make it known that they were cleansed, that they were healed, that they no longer have leprosy. But when they went, they were just happy that they were cleansed. And it's only one leper who came back to say that. <coughs> And even Jesus said, well, what happened to the other nine? Are they not come to give thanks? And it is interesting that that one was a Samaritan. It is as if, well, he 
really decided how our experience after the first effect season. That is all has in prayer. Precious Lord, we come to you as grateful people to be. We are reminded on this occasion that you are the giver of everything that we have. All such things are just entrusted to our care on your behalf. We are stewards, Lord. So help us to be faithful stewards, to take good care of that entrusted to us, to give to you the praise, the honor, the glory, and to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have given and all that you do for us day by day. So Lord, may we learn this lesson again. And may we carry that lesson with us throughout this week, throughout this month, throughout this year, throughout our lives. Praising you for what you have done. Giving you thanks for all that you have given. Bless us as we receive from you a message through song, through poetry, through drama, through prayer. Bless us and cause us in turn to be a blessing to others. And so, May your grace, your mercy, your peace, and your blessing be upon us this day and forevermore. Amen and amen. amen. amen.